It's like Google for your radio. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Recently, I ran across a new, or at least new to me, APRS service where you can send it queries and it returns information. And this returns more data by far than any other service, single service that is, that I've seen. And I wanted to take a few minutes today and walk you guys through some of its capabilities. Now, I'm not going to cover everything in this video, so I will leave a link down in the description below where you can go and see all of the different commands that you can send to it. Let's go ahead and jump over to the computer and get started. All right, so we're over on the WoWe computer, and for this demo today, I'm going to be using APRSD WebChat. If you haven't seen WebChat, I'm going to leave a link to it down in the description below. Craig, the creator of WebChat, did a video recently on it, and it's a fantastic little service. So we're going to use it so that it makes it easy for you guys to see exactly what I'm seeing on my screen as well. Now, what you're looking at right now is uh, WXBot, and we get a weather report from it just by sending the message today. And you can see kind of one of those messages that it sent me a couple of days ago right here, telling me the weather was sunny with a high of 86 uh, for the current location based on my latitude and longitude in the APRS system. But let's take a look at what that looks like when we use this new service. So to use the new service, we're going to send a message to MPAD, M-P-A-D. For this first example, let's go ahead and give it a city and state. So I'm going to give it Nashville, uh, comma space, Tennessee. And let's go ahead and send out that uh, message and see what kind of results we get. And right away, you can see that we get much more details than we get with WXBot. So it's telling me uh, this is for Nashville, Tennessee. We've got moderate rain today. The morning temperature was 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The high is going to be 77, a low of 70. Then it gives us sunrise, sunset. It gives us the percentage of clouds right now. It gives us the UV index, which is that UVI that you see. It gives us the pressure, the humidity, the dew point and the current wind speeds and wind direction. So quite a bit of detail uh, in this report versus what we get in WXBot. Now there's a couple of other ways that you can search for this as well. Instead of sending it a city and a state, maybe we just want to use our grid. So let's give it grid space and I'll give it my six digit grid square and go ahead and send out that query. Now, you'll notice some slight differences between the two forecasts because I'm roughly uh, 30, 35 miles away from Nashville. And this is more closely based on my exact location. Uh, but it gives us the same information based on my grid square. Now, one last example before we move on to the next thing. We can also send CWOP, and that stands for the Civilian Weather Observation Program. I believe it does. Anyway, let's send it that CWOP command. What that's going to do is that's going to query the closest civilian weather station to my current location and send me those results. So that's three different ways that you can get the current weather data for your current location. Now, let's go ahead and move to uh, something else. I will be saving kind of my favorite two features until the very end of this video. But the next one I'm going to try is where, whoop, you gotta spell it right, where am I? I'll go ahead and send that out and that's going to give me detailed information on my exact location based on the GPRS, or I'm sorry, the GPS in the radio. And this is what that data looks like. Uh, it's based on my current call and SSID. It tells me what grid I'm at, the exact lat and long of my last position report that was picked up on APRS.fi. It sends me uh, some more location data just in different formats. So UTM, it gives me that data. It gives me MGRS. Uh, and it gives me a different format for latitude and longitude. It also sends a rough address of where I am located, and then it tells me that I'm in Tennessee, uh, the zip code, and that I'm in the United States. Now, in addition to looking up your exact location at the moment, you can look up the exact location of another operator, provided they have beaconed recently enough. So for that, I'm going to use where is, 
space and a call sign. And I'm just going to pick out KD4 TXF-7. I saw him pretty near to me not long ago, so I think his report should come back in without any trouble. And this time we get the same information, just like you saw uh, a minute ago based on my location, but this one is based on KD4TXF. Uh, it gives us all of the same information. It did pick up an exact street address this time, so 610 Northwest Broad Street. And then it does tell us in UTC time, the last time that station was heard, or the last beacon that was picked up by the APRS system. Now, another cool feature that we can do is we can look up when the next satellite pass is going to be. To do that, I'm going to type sat pass space ISS. You can also substitute ISS with whichever satellite you're interested in. Let's go ahead and send that out and see what kind of results we get. And that will tell us that the next pass, based on my current location in UTC time, will rise at 2155 UTC, and it's going to set at 2157. Now, it does look like this is going to be a low pass over the horizon. Uh, looks like uh, the altitude will only be about 10 degrees above the horizon, and it will tell me which way I would want to point an antenna if I wanted to attempt a connection to this particular satellite, and that would be 23 degrees based on my current location. So I've got that information, but now I need the frequency to work that particular satellite. Well, we can get that data from MPAD as well by sending SATFREQ space ISS. If we send that as our next query, that should return all of the frequency information that we need if we wanted to attempt to work the ISS. And as you can see, it returned five different frequencies for us, depending on how you wanted to work it. If you wanted to use APRS or if you wanted to use voice, it gives you all of that data right here in these different replies that we received. Next up, we can ask for repeater information. So uh, sending the message repeater to MPAD, we'll go ahead and do that. And there's several different ways to request different information on repeaters. I'm going to tell you to check out the link that's down in the description below for all of the different commands. But if you're just specifically looking for a two meter repeater, it will return just that information. Maybe you're looking for just a two meter digital repeater, it will return specifically that information as well. But just sending it repeater will return the closest repeater to us. As you can see in this case, the distance uh, from me to that repeater is 10 miles. It also gives us the degrees that uh, that repeater is from us. And it gives us the repeater frequency, the offset, and the tone. It also tells us a little bit about the capabilities. In this particular case, it's a Yezu system uh, fusion repeater, uh, meaning we can use C4FM if we want to with this particular repeater. Again, check out that document below that I've got the link to so that you can find all of the different ways that you can request repeater data. But right now, I want to show you what I think is probably one of the slickest parts of the MPAD service. We're able to query OpenStreetMaps for different data. Now, I'm only going to show you a couple of examples here. Again, check out that document down below. There is a whole host of commands that we can use to get different data from OpenStreetMaps. So the first one I'll use is OSM space pharmacy. Let's go ahead and send that out. There is a Walgreens uh, relatively close to me, and it should return that as uh, the closest re uh, pharmacy to me. And there it is. It shows that Walgreens on Memorial Boulevard at a distance of about four miles from me and a bearing of 200 and, uh, 215 degrees southwest. So now I know you can get this data from your phone, but that's just pretty sharp that you can get it over APRS delivered right to your radio. Let's try one more example here. This time we'll look for a grocery store or a supermarket. So I'm going to, this time we're going to say OSM space supermarket. And we'll go ahead and send that out. There's a Publix a couple of miles down the road that it should return as the closest result to me. 
And sure enough, right there you can see that the Publix is on West Thompson Lane in Murfreesboro, about two miles from me at a bearing of 284 degrees west-northwest. Now, something that I kind of skipped over in the very beginning, if you can't remember these commands when you're out and about, if you send the message info or help to MPAD, it will return a list of commands that you can use. I'm not sure it returns every single one, but it should give you at least the most popular ones. I also want to mention one other really, really cool feature that you can do with MPAD, and that is sending a message to POS MSG, give it a space, and then give it an email address. The service will send an email to that email address and give you very detailed information about your location. So maybe you want to send that to your wife or your mom or some other loved one. Uh, maybe it's a friend that you want to meet up with. You could send them that email and give them very detailed uh, information on how to find you. So there's a look at the MPAD service, and now you know why I call it Google for your ham radio. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.